Hello and welcome. My name is Moritz Eckert and together we're going to create a constellation cluster in this case on Azure Cloud. So let's go to the documentation. In here you will find a getting started section. There's an installation step that explains how to install the command line interface, set up your cloud provider subscription so constellation can interact with the cloud API. We've all done that and we have that in a separate video, so check that out if you're interested. In here now, I have a terminal environment we have already authenticated towards, in this case, Azure Cloud. And I've already installed the Constellation CLI, so I can say Constellation version, and it will tell me that this is version 2.91, which is in at this point in time the latest release. So if we go back to the documentation, in the first steps then, there is the steps we're gonna walk through now to configure and create a cluster. And the first step is creating, in fact, a configuration, which is a descriptive representation of what you want your cluster to look like. So the first step here is generating a config file. So we're gonna go ahead and say constellation gener uh, config generate and in this case we want to generate a config for Azure Cloud. If we open up that file, uh, constellation conf, there's a lot of information in here but the important stuff we're going to focus on in this video is first of all the versions. So up here you can say see that the image version, so essentially the constellation version we want to use is 2.91 which was the latest version shown by the CLI and then we can give it a name let me go up there. Let's call this demo. A state disk size, essentially how much um, memory you need for uh, the stateful data uh, that's attached to your notes. Uh, 30 should be good here. And then there are two versions, the, the Kubernetes version <clears throat> and the microservice version. So for the Kubernetes version, um, there's always a number of supported versions alongside corresponding to each constellation version. So let's see what are the supported versions for this constellation version, so for 2.91. So we can say constellation config, and then there is this Kubernetes versions, and it tells us that these are the supported versions. So currently selected is the middle one. So let's go back into the config file. This one should be fine. Microservice version um, also corresponds basically to the image version, which are our constellation, uh, yeah, our constellation services. So we're not gonna touch that. And these are the the main versions we need to select. So in this case, we say latest constellation version with Kubernetes version 1.26. So next, we have some provider-specific information like the subscription we're using, the tenant, and so forth. And in here, I could now go ahead and configure that uh, as part of um, my, um, yeah, my IAM control in the cloud portal. Or if I have the required permissions, um, I can also let Constellation or the Constellation CLI take care of that. And the command we need is documented here in the next step. It's the Constellation IAM create. So let's copy that command and tell us that it should create in the IAM resources we need in the region West US. The resource group groups sh should, be, should be called Constellation Demo Video and the service principle SP service principle demo video. So let's let Constellation create that IAM uh, resources for us. And yes, please go ahead. And now we'll wait until this command has completed. So now the IAM, command, uh, IAM resources were created. Uh, what we can see, first of all, we see a Terraform state here. That's essentially the, the Terraform state for these IAM resources in our uh, Azure cloud environment. Let's open the config file again. We can now see the information that was filled in automatically by this command, like the subscription, the resource group, and so forth. And one thing here is also the instance type. This is essentially 
the VM machine type we're going to use for our Kubernetes nodes. In this case, uh, DC4 ASV5. I can let DCLI, let me, uh, oh, no, it's fine. Um, let the CLI tell us which are the, the available instance types. So we can say constellation config instance types. And it will show us all the instant types for all the supported cloud environments. So for confidential VMs, we can see all of these instance types. You will also find them in the documentation and of course uh, in the documentation of your cloud provider that also tells us what these instance types corresponds to in terms of uh, CPU cores and memory, of course. So let's go back. Um, let me clear that screen. So what do we have? We have now the filled in configuration. We have created the IAM resources. So the next step, if we go back to the documentation, is then creating the resources, provisioning the infrastructure as described in our config file. So let's go ahead, say constellation, create um, control plane nodes one, worker nodes, let's say two, and please confirm automatically. And this will now run and provision the infrastructure, create those confidential VMs as we specified in our config file. Let's wait for this command to be completed. Okay, the command is done. Uh, we have now successfully provisioned these resources in the cloud. And now we're gonna initialize a, a, a test, do the attestation procedure, attest these these confidential VMs and initialize the Kubernetes cluster. If you go to our documentation, the final step here now is the constellation init command. So let's let's go here and do that. Let's run constellation init. And again, um, this will take a bit of time until it has completed that procedure. But what we can do now is we can go into the cloud portal, um, go in this case, Microsoft Azure portal, go to resource groups. And if we scroll down a bit, or let's first refresh maybe, scroll down a bit, we see uh, two, new, two new resource groups. One is called the demo video and one the demo video identity. The identity is where the service principle lives and the demo video resource group is where all the cluster um, specific infrastructure uh, resides. So what we see here is two virtual machine scale sets, one for the control plane, one for the worker node. We can also see uh, that there was some virtual network created for that cluster and some load balancer that's basically exposing the Kubernetes API server as well as um, the, yeah, the constellation API, if you will. So let's go back to our terminal and wait for this in the init command to be completed. So now the init has completed. Um, we are uh, shown a bunch of information, which the details about all the stuff you find in the docs and we will also cover in other videos. Um, what we see in the file system is that there are a few files created. There's our master secret. There's the Terraform state of this cluster. There is a ID that's unique to this cluster and makes it very um, identifiable. Um, and there is the admin conf, which is essentially the credentials for first authenticating the API server and for our user credentials to authenticate towards the cluster. So let's do what it says and export this kubeconf and then we can use our kubectl tool for interacting with this cluster. And here we can see um, there are three nodes, two are already ready. One is currently joining, not ready marked yet. Um, but that's it. We have a created a constellation cluster with version 2.91 and Kubernetes version 1.26. And we're now ready to go ahead and use and deploy uh, our application into that cluster. Thanks a lot for watching. That's it. See you in the next video.